This video will teach you all about significant figure rules. The fact of the matter is there is uncertainty in all measurements. The certain digits in your measurement includes all numbers read directly off of the measuring device plus one extra estimated digit. As you might expect, scientists need to have specific rules in order to be able to identify which measurements are going to be appropriate for a particular measuring instrument. So for example, if you look at this graduated cylinder, the units of a graduated cylinder are typically milliliters. But if we look at this together, in order to read off of an instrument, you first have to take note of the intervals that this is divided into. So for example, you can see that each of these intervals represent the one's place. So we can all agree, I think, that this measurement, um, we're going to take a look at the meniscus down here, but this measurement is definitely going to be 56. But the question becomes, well, it could be 56.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4. You get the idea, but we should all agree that it's going to be 56. So that's why the proper reading should be something like 56 point something, because that point something is the estimated digit, and that will vary from person to person. The amount of definite digits depends on the device. So an exact number is a number that has no uncertainty and therefore has an infinite number of significant figures. Anytime you're counting something like 25 people or pencils, this is going to be a, a, an exact number. Defined quantities are considered to also be exact. So 12 inches equal a foot, 100 centimeters equals one meter. Those are both examples of exact quantities. And when you perform calculations with these, you are never going to let that dictate how many significant figures are in your answer. Here are some rules for sig figs. The first one's fairly easy. All non-zero digits are considered significant. So for example, 2.17 would have three sig figs. 3894.6 has five sig figs. The second rule is that leading zeros are never significant, and these are zeros to the left of the non-zero numbers. So for example, 0 0.003 only has one significant figure. 0 0.04 only also has one sig fig. Captive zeros, are, these are zeros in the middle, are always significant. For example, 205, all of the numbers would be considered significant. For 20,005, all of the numbers would be considered significant. The fourth rule is a little tricky for some students, but don't worry, I will have a helpful hint at the end of this presentation. But trailing zeros are sometimes significant. So these are zeros at the end of the non-zero number. So for example, they are significant if the number contains a decimal point. So in the number 155.0, that zero at the end is considered significant because there is a decimal point. In the number 0 0.450, the zero at the end is also included in the number of significant figures. However, trailing zeros are not significant if the number does not contain a decimal point. So for example, in the number 1550, there's no decimal point at the end, so therefore only the one, five, and five are considered significant. In the number 45,000, there is no decimal place at the end, at, excuse me, there's no decimal point at the end of that number, so that's why only the four and the five would be considered significant. So here's a really helpful summary that will help you be able to decide whether numbers are going to be significant or not. So remember, in blue, these are called leading zeros, and they are never significant. The zeros in the middle, in between two non-zero numbers, are captive zeros, and they are always significant. And then zeros at the end are called trailing zeros, and they are sometimes significant. If there's a decimal point, then they are considered significant. Based on our rules, can you tell how many significant figures there are in this number? Take a minute to think about it. You can pause the video if you need to. Did you figure it out?
So again, these zeros in the beginning are leading zeros, so they're never significant. Captive zeros are always significant, and trailing zeros are sometimes only if there's a decimal point. Well, guess what? There is a decimal point, so that means that these trailing zeros would be considered significant. So that means that there would be a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 sig figs in this number. Here's some extra practice. Again, you might want to pause the video to try these on your own and see how you do. So in the number 4.59, there is going to be a total of three significant figures in that number. In the number 3.00, there is going to be a total of three significant figures there. And you may say, how do you know that those zeros are significant? Rem remember, those zeros at the end have a decimal. And so since those are trailing zeros and there is a decimal, those zeros are considered significant. In the next one, you've got um, some captive zeros there, so all of them would be considered significant. Number four is a little tricky because you have both leading zeros and trailing zeros. So remember, leading zeros or zeros before the non-zero number are considered not significant ever. They're never going to be significant. But the trailing zero is going to be significant because there is a decimal point here. So that means that there are two sig figs in this number. 43,000, these are um, three zeros at the end, so they're trailing zeros. However, there is no decimal point, so that is going to mean that this is only going to have two sig figs. And then finally, you may say, how do you know about um, scientific notation? So this is what's kind of cool about scientific notation. If you notice the coefficient right away, it has a decimal point, and so that's going to make all of those significant. So whatever you have as the coefficient, that is going to be the number of significant figures that you have. So hopefully that helped you to be able to understand the different rules with significant figures. This is a really important skill. This will especially be important whenever you're doing calculations with significant figures. So please make sure you seek out help from your teacher if you need to.